Under Jurgen Klopp, Liverpool have made 39 signings. Here is every single signing ranked by myself, of course, only my opinion. Number 39, Alex Meninga. Someone's got to come last and it's him. Camille Grabera. I don't even know who that is. Steven Kolker. It was such a weird signing. He played like four games for us. Played up front once. It's centre-half, so third last. Number 36, Lonergan. Played like two games for us. Another goalkeeper. Number 35, Ben Davies. Another weird one, man. A centre-half again. Just never played. And I'd honestly never heard of this guy. Pitaluga. Goalkeeper. Plays in under-21s now. I put him in here on the basis he might improve. <laughs> that is literally it. Number 33, Arthur Mello, the forgotten man, the shadow. You know it's bad when I've got to put a picture of his Juventus kit in. Can't even find one of him playing for us. Number 32, Sepp Vandenberg. I feel sorry for him. Never played, never got a chance. So get them all out of the way. They're essentially all players who never played for us. Number 31, Ozan Kubak. It ended really abruptly there. I don't even know what happened. He was kind of a filler player. Came in in that injury crisis season. He wasn't too bad in some games, but in other games it was terrible. Obviously left the club as well, so number 31. Number 30, perhaps controversially, I've got him quite high compared to some people in Carrius, only because he's actually played for the club uh, more than half of them keepers before. Obviously only known for his howlers, um, so I kind of feel sorry for him, but really bad, really bad. Next I've got Cade Gordon, the youngster who played a few games, got a growing pains and then stopped playing. That's genuinely true, googled that. I don't know what's happened with him. Number 28, Calvin Ramsey. What is the point? What was the point in signing you? Aberdeen's young prospect. Liverpool's bench injured. He got a red card in some under-21 game. That's all he's ever done for us. Number 27, Ben Doak. I quite enjoyed this guy's cameos um, in games in the final dying minutes. He needed more game time. I think he'll get the game time this year. But as of right now, his impact on the club hasn't been massive. So 27, but this could definitely be higher in the future, 100%. Number 26, and you're surprised I've gotten this high, by the way. I've been really generous. Naby Keita. I will die on this hill, Liverpool's worst value for money chance forever. £50 million down the drain. Uh, let's be real, he's played games. That's why he's ahead of the likes of Lonergan and Stephen Colker. I know he's bad, but he's not. At least he's actually featured for us. They're still trying to find that Champions League final ball. I've actually got Ragnar Klavan ahead of him. Didn't feature at all, really, but he was just. A, it wasn't even average. It was probably a bad play, I'll be honest with you. But he wasn't much money compared to Cater. £50 million, pounds, man. Number 24, what has happened to Carvalho, man? I really liked him. He looked like a. Breath of fresh air at Fulham in the Championship. Really energetic, dynamic, so talented on the ball as well. Hasn't featured Liverpool, gone on loan now again. <sighs> Number 23, Mario Grudic or Gruic, however you want to say it. Mario Grudic or Gruic, however you want to say it. I think he had a bit of talent about him. I think he was a decent player. Ultimately never good enough to compete in Champions League for us, but we sold him for double the amount we've bought him for. That's what I've written down, and that's why he's getting number 23. Then I've got a player who I liked personally. I think he was a... He just seemed like a decent, funny bloke. Minamino. He was never ultimately good enough uh, to feature regularly. I think France, play well, playing in France is his level. Or oh, wherever the hell he's at now, because I'm too lazy to check, and I'm not really keeping up to date with Takuma Minamino. Number 21, Shakiri. I liked him, but the highlight of his career was not at Liverpool, let's just say that. Number 20, Adrian. A player who gets loads of stick for no reason. Why would you give your third choice keeper, who's like 37, loads of flack? I don't understand. He's had a big moment, he saved that penalty. Um, I mean, Carvalho's had a big moment, he scored that 97th minute goal, but for me, Adrian is just pretty average. These are all bang average, by the way, these players. And ultimately, he's no skin of our back, pretty cheap as well, good experience at the club. Number 19, Kostas Simikas, a fan favourite, he's not put many feet wrong as in Liverpool shirt, he's not been too bad, pretty average, good value for money perhaps. Number 18, perhaps a surprise placement on the list. Dominic Solanke. Now, I know what you're thinking, he, he was shit. He was so, so bad. He scored once, and we sold him for £19 million to Bournemouth. He scored one goal, we sold him for 20 million quid. That's a good deal. That's good transfer business right there. And Christ, that's the only reason he's a side. That is the only reason as well. Number 17, Oxlade Chamberlain. Leaves on a free. Pretty bad business, but ultimately, he had a few moments. That goal against Man City stands out to me. I think he was good to have in the dressing room as well. Um, he's been around, hasn't he? I, I liked him, generally. Just so, so inconsistent. That is why he's not any higher, and this is definitely his maximum he could go to on this list. But I look at people below him, he's not much worse. Number 16, Darwin Nunes. £80 million, pounds. he's had one season, give him time. He could easily be in the top 10 in here, but now he's not. Number 15, time will tell, but Gakpo for me. Of course, we can only judge him off his first season, and he's been really good, so what more can you say? Number 14, one of my favourite players in the list, Stefan Bajetic. He was signed for, listen to this, two... Hundred thousand pounds from Celta Vigo, two hundred grand. Still only a teenager, only going to improve. Played the majority of the first half of the season this year. Was unbelievable. Kept Fabinho out the team at times as well. I love him. He could end up, honestly, I promise you, top five on this list.
for the value 200k. Unbelievable player. Number 13, going to go Harvey Elliott. He featured in a lot of games last season, pretty much every game last season. He's hopefully only going to improve in the future as well. Signed him for dirt cheap. Number 12, Thiago. I think he's a three times better player than Harvey Elliott on his day. But struggled with consistency. Injuries really halted him. Signed him at the back end of his career as well for about 30, 35 million. Who's had a bigger impact on Liverpool now? It's been Thiago, to be honest, but who's going to have a bigger impact? It's going to be Elliot, so them two are very close. Remember, we're not judging who's the best player we're judging as a transfer, as a deal. One of my favourite players in the squad, Ibu Kanate. He's been superb last season, and again, I'm kind of thinking with future in mind, he's only going to improve. He's just going to be world class. I can see it, man. Number 10, Luis Diaz, one of my favourite players in the squad. Obviously struggled with injuries massively, had such a hard role to fill in Mane's shoes. Um, before him, but Lewis Diaz has been unbelievable. Number 10 for me, signed him for about 50 million, which to be honest, I thought it was cheaper than that. But I have no doubt in my mind he'll be higher on this list when he finishes Liverpool. Number 9, Jota. I think he's done more for Liverpool. Granted, he's been there longer. Again, about 40 million. Really liked the signing when it happened, and yeah, it's paid off. Number 8, I keep mentioning my favourite player, my favourite player. This guy was my favourite player when he was at the club. Genie Wijnaldum, the Swiss Army knife in midfield. Number 8 for me. Rarely gave a bad performance, rarely didn't turn up. It was that 7 or 8 out of 10 every single game. Signed in 2016, and yeah, just played a massive, massive role in that Klopp era. The last three players I've mentioned, I've said they've been my favourite players, whatever. This guy is probably my favourite player. And I said that about Mat about uh, Wijnaldum, Matip. Joel Matip is the boy. Signed on a free transfer, I believe the only signing in like at least the top 25 who have been a free transfer. Number six, I'm gonna go Fabinho. Believe it or not guys, he was the best in the world at one point. So, so instrumental, dominating midfields, locking down games, dictating play, and he was just so instrumental to Liverpool's success. Looking like he's leaving the club as well to Saudi as well, so getting a bit of money back. Fabinho, number six. Number five, eight million pounds. He came from Hull. It's Andy Robertson. I think Robertson goes down as the best value for money. Not necessarily the best transfer. I don't think they mean the same thing. But yeah, £8 million turned into a world-class left-back. The best left-back in the world at times. A starter at Liverpool and has been for years and years. Number four, Sadio Mane. I often forget that Firmino was there before Klopp was there, which is mental for me. But Mane was that first attacking signing. The first big signing, to be fair, Klopp made. About £30 million from Southampton. I don't need to speak about Mane. He has been amazing. 100% a Liverpool legend but £30 million, pounds, man, that's cheap. Number three, I don't think Liverpool would have won anything if it wasn't for these top three. Alisson Becker, £65 million pounds I've written down here. I thought it was more than that. But talking about building from the back, man, he, the best keeper in the world right now, need I say more. Such an impact on that Liverpool side. Just imagine if it was the other way and we had Mignolet there or Carrius. Man, it would have been like Man United. Number two, Virgil van Dijk. £80 million, pounds, it doesn't mean anything. We'll go down as Liverpool legend 100%, performed in every single competition, every single game essentially, breaking his own records, setting his own records, there were times where people were raving about people running past Van Dijk, that's a goody word, and still is by the way, but he has to come in at number two, Mohamed Salah takes the top spot, after his previously poor stint in the Premier League, I didn't expect much from Salah, I mean despite how good he was for Roma, but he's been the guy, without him none of this would have happened, being compared to Messi at times, there is not a word in my vocabulary that can sum up Mohamed Salah, and about £40 million pounds as well, it's not only a great value for money signing, it's the best signing. There is my top 39. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like. It took a while to make this one. And subscribe for more of the same. Let me know in the comments one player you would change. Just one. Let's keep it simple. And a little explanation. Who you'd move up and who you'd move down. Thank you. And see you later.